In the headlines to the CBC Newsnight, Barbadians warned about Ponzi and other illegal schemes. The Prime Minister wants the Caribbean and Latin America to collaborate on critical issues. The Health Services Amendment Bill 2024 gets the attention of Parliament's Joint Select Committee. And... Broadcasting from our studios in the Pine St. Michael, this is CBC Newsnight, starting now. Good evening and welcome to the CBC Newsnight with the details. I'm Wendy Burke. Two leading government agencies have sounded the alarm about Ponzi schemes as a recently registered business is investigated by the authorities. While not mentioning a specific business, the Central Bank of Barbados and the Corporate Affairs and Intellectual Property Office, Kaipo, are both warning people to be on their guard. Just yesterday, Central Bank Governor Dr. Kevin Greenidge, during the Central Bank's latest economic review, urged Barbadians to do their due diligence when thinking of investing in what he called get-rich-quick schemes. In this regard, he noted that the bank had looked into a particular business that had come to his attention. We also did some internal investigation which had Kaipo, and there's no such company. There's a name registered, but there's no such company. So we have passed all information we've gathered to our sister regulator, the Fair Trading Commission, and there I saw the issue a statement, and there we'll do the necessary investigations. Dr. Greenwich has highlighted three red flags he says are usually associated with these illegitimate schemes. One, where you're going to pay a deposit, that's smelling. That's smelling fishy. That is a duck. When you're going to bring people, the duck backing. That quacking really loud. And when it reach high, high returns, my life is a really big duck. Okay? Avoid them. Apply hard to raise them. And generally, overarching thing is they know quick wait, they know get rich schemes around the place or no? Usually, persons that purport to give you get, get rich schemes is actually using to get rich, using you to get rich. You ain't getting rich, I can guarantee you that. Kaipo has also cautioned Barbadians not to fall victim to fraudsters hiding behind legitimate business names. Acting Registrar Tamisha Rochester today issued a public advisory to drive home the point. These unscrupulous individuals register legitimate activities but then use the registration as a cover to engage in illicit dealings. Government authorities, such as the Financial Services Commission, regularly monitor business activities, and individuals found engaging in illegal operations, whether registered or not, will face investigation and legal action. Members of the public should report any suspicious business activities to the relevant authorities. Ms. Rochester went on to explain about business registration. The public is urged to remain vigilant and informed about the purpose and limitations of business name registration. Registering a business name is an administrative process that provides businesses with legal recognition to operate under a specific name. However, it does not serve as a license or approval for any activity that contravenes the law. Business name registration offers several key benefits, including establishing legal identity and exclusivity, facilitating access to financial services and contracts, promoting transparency and trust, creating a foundation for intellectual property protection. With violence a pressing issue for the Caribbean and Latin America, Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley is calling for a collaborative effort among the countries to tackle the vexing issues as well. She was making the call while speaking at the opening of the 16th Ministerial Forum for Development in Latin America and the Caribbean. Anesta Henry has the report. Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley is calling the Caribbean and Latin American countries to work together to resolve prime and other issues impacting citizens and the development. Addressing the opening of the 16th Ministerial Forum for Development in Latin America and the Caribbean, Prime Minister Marty says it gives the region no pleasure to know that nations in these areas occupy every spot in the top 10 of countries with the highest per capita homicide rate in the world. There is no formal theater of war in this hemisphere, but the scale of death from crime 
is unacceptable in almost every corner of the Americas. And it is largely because we have been paying a very heavy price in some countries for Second Amendment rights, in other countries for the right to bear arms. And regrettably, technology has so evolved that those arms, when born, can be disproportionate in its impact, particularly when used in conflict. While noting that changing mindsets can help people to see and do things differently, Prime Minister Marty says countries in the region can do more to lift their people out of poverty, protect those who are already out, as well as create opportunities for all. We have done well, but we will never be able to put ourselves to rest until we take all who can be taken out of that trap of poverty. And it is not just the economic poverty that I speak of now, but it is also the spiritual and cultural poverty that matters. Government is collaborating with the United Nations Development Program and the Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean to host the forum. 150 participants, including more than 20 government delegations from the region, are delving into strategies to strengthen resilience through adaptive social policies that respond to the economic, social, and environmental needs and crises faced by the region. Prime Minister Motley is hoping the forum serves as an opportunity for delegates to think outside the box and share best practices. And in too many of our countries, the systems for measurement are simply not there. In my own country, we are continuing to grapple with the fact that we are not measuring appropriately the informal economy. And while we have done rebasing with respect to those things that we can measure, we have still not found the mechanisms to measure the informal economy sufficiently. Administrator of the UNDP, Akin Steiner, says in the midst of global challenges, countries in Latin America and the region must work together to build pathways out of crises. We live in an age where much of what will happen in one country does require us to find common ground and shared interests on which to build those pathways out of crisis. Our responsibility as this generation at this moment in time however harsh the headwinds may be, is in fact not to lose sight of the fact that we do live in an age of possibility and the choices that we make will in fact determine so many opportunities that those who follow us, be they our children, our grandchildren, will actually benefit from. The forum ends on November 1st at Wyndham Grand Barbados. Anesta Henry, CBC News. The viewing of the late Sir Henry Ford took place this evening at the St. Matthias Anglican Church in Christchurch. Respects were paid to the political stalwart, former opposition leader and legal luminary by family, friends, colleagues and well-wishers. The viewing ran from 3 to 6 p.m. and his wife, Cheryl Lady Ford, children Nicholas, Martin and Ryan, along with grandchildren, were on hand to speak with the well-wishers who flowed through the church while others stayed and gave support. Coming up, the Joint Select Committee of Parliament examines the Health Services Amendment Bill 2024. Barbados has been advised proper legislation is required for the Environmental Protection Department, EPA. The matter came to head during a meeting of the Joint Select Committee session on the Social Sector and the Environment on the Health Services Amendment Bill 2024. Further insight was also provided into the role and functions of the EPD. Attorney at Law Christine Toppin Alahar says everyone is doing their best, even with the current deficiencies. I think one of the key things in this legislation, I think I mentioned it in my comments, is that they're trying to change the enforcement mechanism to get to your point uh, by using the administrative uh, orders in place of uh, summary prosecutions, uh, prosecutions for summary offenses. And certainly the prosecutions for summary offenses, one reason that people have been able to break the law with, almost with impunity throughout the Caribbean is because it is so very difficult for a number of reasons, uh, one being the magistrate's court system is really so backed up in most of the countries. 
Meanwhile, the Barbados Bar Association says the Health Services Act has served Barbados well over the year, having been enacted in the late 1960s and amended several times. However, Bar President Kay Williams queried if the time is not right for reform or amendments to the Act to meet the needs of modern Barbados. Do we need to create a policy paper? Do we need to rethink, relook, reshape in our We've gone past the post-colonial phase where we had a lot of law reform. And we have a good history of that kind of law reform, post-colonial law reform, post-independence law reform. And now we are our own, we are a republic, having transitioned from a constitutional monarchy onto uh, a, a, a republic status. What does modern Barbados require? So that is just something that we want to throw out there. Barbados' Minister of Energy and Business, Senator Lisa Cummins, has assumed the presidency of the Hemispheric Body Latin American Energy Organization, OLED. In accepting the role for 2024 to 2025, Senator Cummins committed the hemispheric body to ensuring that the unique and specific energy transitioning issues facing the Caribbean are integrated fully into the work of the organization. She also pointed out that within OLAD there are sub-regional differences that need to be captured within clear defined work programs on the way forward. Obviously, you have the conversation around the Latin America Caribbean group, and certainly from our perspective in the Caribbean, we want to make sure that this is not just about Latin American interests on their own, because we have uh, within Olada the South American interests group, we have the Central American interests, and then we have the Caribbean interests, which are very specific and unique to our countries. Senator Cummins says conversations on countries engaged in energy transitioning while others are experiencing energy crises is also on the table as an important issue. This will take prominence as Senator Cummins shares the Organization and Ministerial Council, which is a significant contributor to the sustainable development and energy security of the region. Cuba, Ecuador, we have some real challenges here and today uh, I'm very happy that Olade has issued statements in solidarity and in support of those countries that are in energy crisis and have made a commitment here as well through individual bilateral efforts to provide support as needed to those countries. Barbados wants to see a normalization of ties between Cuba and the United States. Deputy Permanent Representative to the United Nations, Carita White, stated the island's position as it joined with the majority of UN members Wednesday in reiterating a call for an end to the embargo against Cuba. She says the island values its strong relationship with both countries, noting the step will pave the way for greater peace, cooperation and development in the region. Barbados also wants Cuba removed from the list of countries that sponsor terrorism. Barbados reaffirms its strong opposition to the use of unilateral coercive measures, especially those with extraterritorial reach that violate international norms. Such, such actions not only hinder legitimate trade and economic activity, but also infringe upon the sovereign, sovereignty of states. The continued economic, commercial, and financial embargo on Cuba is inconsistent with these principles, and it undermines the very charter this assembly upholds. The Barbados Society of Psychology has suggested Barbadians post-COVID have been warming up to seeking help from psychologists. President Ronald Pope says despite reservations by some due to the stigma associated with mental health, more people have turned to psychologists and other specialists. With Psychology Week upcoming, Mr. Pope says the theme, Promoting Mental Health for Community Peace and Wellness, was selected after assessing the current state of affairs in Barbados. The week will be observed from November 3rd to 9th. Looking at the current state of affairs in Barbados, we recognize that we were seeing a lot of anger, a lot of aggression playing out in our society, and we wanted to address that. We wanted to educate the public a little bit more about why our, you know, why our people are behaving like that, why our young people are behaving like that. And then we looked at it, we saw it as kind of a crisis that needed to be um, looked at.
The facts say Morning Barbados reaches an audience of over 50,000 and Newsnight reaches over 56,000. It's simple. When you advertise, you're getting your message to over 50,000 of your potential customers. Make the call to CBC Sales Department today and watch your business grow. Contact us at 467-5559 or email marketing at cbc.bb. Sports is just ahead. Sports time now with Damien Best. Yeah, good evening to Wendy. Good evening to our viewers and listeners. Some cricket news first up. Well, the West Indies, they're chasing 210 runs for victory against England in the first one-day international at the North Sound Ground in Antigua. After winning the toss and opting to field, a miserly bowling performance by the Wendy's limited England to a below par 209 all-out in 45.1 overs in the day-night fixture. Gurukesh Moti snapped up 4 for 41, Jaden Seals had 2 for 22, Azari Joseph 2 for 46, and Matthew Ford 2 for 48. Captain Liam Livingston top scored with 48, and Sam Curran 37. Well, after a 90-minute delay due to rain, the Wendy's in reply a few moments ago were 24 without loss after six overs. The game is currently live on MCTV's ESPN Channel 308. We're going to pause here and come back in just a moment. UWI Blackbirds and KFC Deacons easily retained their Goddard Enterprises Senior Volleyball Knockout Crowns when the women's and men's finals were held last night at the Wildy Gymnasium. Both teams romped to straight sets victories in front of a large crowd. Ladies will take the spotlight first up on finals night. Wow Foundation United up against UWI Blackbirds, the defending champs signaling their intention. Shakira Hall with a big kill. Foundation started slowly. Deanna Warren trying to get the engine room going off the block and outside. Then Cupid, Cesar Batson outsmarting her opponents with a dump into space. But it would be the Blackbirds to seal the first two sets going to the right of your screen. That's hammered 25-18, 25-14 the scoreline. The vital third now. And again, Foundation's defense is caught on their heels. Dink eluding the double block. Match on the line and every point vital. Gabriel Sandiford using the angle to great effect. Foundation hoping for revival. But the Blackbirds prove too strong. Just unleashing a barrage of crushing spikes. And they would seal this one in three straight. 25-18, 25-14, 25-14. The Knockout Queens retaining their title in style over Division I first-timers, Foundation United. Time for the men to have a piece of the spotlight. Deacons in black battling chargers. Ronald Rice sets Isaiah Francis, who comes off the edge, firing. Not a man move. The first set had great ebb and flow. The other side of the coin, chargers, solid as a rock. A Johnny Marshall and company at the core. But Deacons would draw first blood. Francis again posing a problem for Chargers down the line with precision. The boys in black edging a tight first set, 25-20, and securing the second as well at 25-16. Into the third we go. Chargers trailing 8-9. Persistence after the block. They reset, and Chad Griffith handles the business. Real level. But Deacons will only give them a sniff. Caden Hoyt swings into action and it pings off the block and into open space. Heartbreak for Chargers. Up by four points. Deacons never look back. Akeem Mears flexing some muscle at a point. And the final nail in the coffin to give Deacons the victory. Compliments who else? Francis. Deacons doing it in three straight. 25-20, 25-16, 25-19. Victory over Chargers. They repeat as the men's knockout champions. Well, that is the first half in sports. Wendy, it's back over to you. We'll be back a bit later on. Thank you so much, Damien. And up next on the CBC Newsline, the business report. 
In tonight's business, a noted economist says if efforts are not undertaken to resolve the financial impact of climate change now, over the next 50 years, Caribbean economies are going to lose approximately 2 to 3 percent of growth per year. This is according to Deputy Principal of the University of the West Indies Cayfield campus, Professor Winston Moore. He was speaking during the start of a three-day meeting of the Caribbean ICJ Advocacy Clinic for the International Court of Justice Advisory Opinion on Climate Change. It is hosted by the Faculty of Law at Cave Hill and the Sridhar Rampal Center for International Trade Policy and Services ahead of a hearing before the International Court of Justice on Climate Change scheduled for December. If you look at the last 20 years, Caribbean economies have grown by less than 1%. So if you're talking about losing 2 to 3%, that means that you're pushing these economies into a recession. So over the next 50 years, climate change will result in Caribbean economies being a lot smaller. That has implications for uh, employment, for jobs, of course, job creation, um, our fiscal balances as well, and the uh, minister tax take. So it would have a, a significant impact on Caribbean economies over the next 50 years. And Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Kerry Simmons, says for too long, the people throughout the Caribbean have been too numb to the reality and the catastrophic consequences if substantial improvements are not made. Between 2008 and 2020, the quantum of loss and damage being paid out by regional governments and regional entities as a result of natural catastrophes um, would have been 28 billion United States dollars. That is between 2008 and 2020. And if you add more recent events since 2020, you will realize that we are now well in excess of 30 billion. A day after the UK's budget was delivered, Barbados has been told an economically stable United Kingdom will make it a stronger and more credible international partner. Deputy British High Commissioner to Barbados Charlie Williams says measures introduced are aimed at putting the UK economy back on a sustainable footing and driving investment to push growth. She says Britain will remain one of the largest providers of overseas development assistance. Ms. Williams was a guest on CBC TV8's Morning Barbados. In the Caribbean, we focus on climate, climate resilient and inclusive growth. We also focus on delivering humanitarian aid to people who need it. Uh, economic, uh, economic sustainability and other things. So we've got a massive infrastructure program where we're spending up to, I think it's 350 million pounds uh, to deliver climate resilient infrastructure. Things like the new port in St. Vincent, things like uh, climate resilient roads in Dominica. So all of these things are good for, uh, uh, for, for people in the Caribbean as well as I think protecting those uh, working people in the UK. Time now for a look at how the stocks traded locally and regionally today. In Jamaica, Sajikor Select Funds Limited Financial with 6,720,262 units was the volume leader, followed by Trans Jamaican Highway Limited and Victon Lind Firm Limited Ordinary Shares. In Trinidad and Tobago, the market was closed in observance of the Diwali holiday. And here in Barbados, there was no activity today on the regular market. And that's business. We'll take a break and be back with the weather. From the beautiful shores of the Gem of the Caribbean, Barbados, home of the amazing Harrison's Cave, the tantalizing Oyston's Bay Garden, our historic garrison, the indigenous road tennis, and the friendliest people in the world, we are 94.7 FM, the ultimate Bajan experience. And we say good evening to Carrie Ann O'Neill, who will tell us if there's going to be more rain overnight. 
Well, good evening to you, Wendy, and good evening, everyone. We indeed are expecting more showers later on tonight as well as tomorrow, as we do have a trough system approaching the island. But today, due to light winds and also strong daytime heating, we had those heavy showers along with isolated thunderstorms. The winds across the region, while well, they are light to moderate, they're peaking at 70 knots, and showers prevailed across the coastal areas of the Guianas. The maximum temperature today was 31 degrees Celsius, the minimum 26 degrees. At present, the temperature stands at 27 degrees Celsius. The relative humidity 85 percent. Those winds are coming in from the northeast. We take a look now at some atmospheric conditions across the region where we do have warm temperatures affecting the islands. They are in their upper 20s. Meanwhile, the humidity shows moisture is building across a few of the islands and those winds are generally light to moderate across the region. We take a look now at our satellite feed where we do have light winds along with strong daytime heating maintaining cloudy skies along with heavy showers and isolated thunderstorms for us here in Barbados today. We had up to 43.2 millimeters of rainfall over there in St. Michael. Now, there is a trough system approaching the island. As a result, we will experience a mix of clear and cloudy skies along with some scattered showers. Meanwhile, those winds are peaking at 17 knots. The seas at this time moderate in open water, with swells now peaking at 2 meters. Later on tonight, as I said, we are expecting a few more scattered showers here in Barbados. Wet conditions also prevailed across the northern islands. Further south, we do have there some showers and isolated thunderstorms occurring across the coastal areas of the Guianas. And over now in the Western Caribbean, a trough system maintained very wet conditions across Hispaniola as well as Puerto Rico. That's our first look at the weather. After the break, we'll have the forecast. Welcome back. In the forecast for tomorrow, the sun is expected to rise at 5, that's 52, and will set at 531. Now, the first high tide, I can tell you, will be at 351 in the early morning and the first to low at 11 minutes after 9 in the morning. The seas, moderate in open water with swells peaking at 2 meters. The winds, they're coming in from the east to the east, southeast, and they're peaking at 30 kilometers per hour. For us here in Barbados tonight, we can expect that mix of clear and cloudy skies along with some scattered showers. And over the next three days, while well, instability will maintain partially cloudy to cloudy skies along with a few showers. And we say welcome back to Damien Best for the second part of sports. Thanks so much, Wendy. Well, Barbadian Ocean Roar Philip Owls was recently one of three finalists nominated for the Spirit of the Caribbean Black Honor Awards in the United Kingdom. Owls rolled into the history books and the Guinness Book of Records by becoming one of the first Barbadians to successfully cross the Atlantic in the 2003 Woodville Atlantic Rowing Challenge along with fellow rower Randall Valdez. The 69-year-old was recognized by Event Connoisseurs Limited for being the first Barbadian and the oldest person to row the Arctic last year in the Northwest Passage Expedition. To, to be recognized that we in the Caribbean and Caribbean people is not only about athletics, but water sports have been left out a lot. Only thing they have is swimming. But this is, um, you know, another great achievement there. And I'm proud to be part of it. This sport, the ocean rowing, it, it, it was pretty much, um, it used to come to Barbados back in like 2003. That, that's when uh, Rando Valdez and myself, we did the race from Canary Islands to, to Barbados. And we got third place. So currently we are ranked eighth in the world for the fastest time across the Atlantic in a rowboat. And we did that in 2003. So it's a very, um, it's a very tough race. But the problem is with that now that they're moved to Antigua and, and it's changed, the race have changed the dynamics and stuff. Well, the winner of the award was Rihanna Patterson, the founder of the Dominica Dementia Foundation. 
Well, Haley Matthews produced a strong all-round performance, but it was not enough to help the Melbourne Renegades avoid a 28-run defeat against the Brisbane Heat in the Women's Big Bash League in Brisbane yesterday. The West Indian skipper first picked up two for 21 as the Heat posted 169 for eight from their 20 overs after being put into bat. Fellow Barbados and West Indies all-rounder DeAndre Dotton took one for 27. Georgia Redmayne led the Heat with 44. In reply, the Renegades could only manage 141 for 9 as Matthews made a 23-ball 35, while Dotton only scored 1. Player of the match, Grace Parsons, took 3 for 22. Well, the Renegades now have two losses in as many games this season and will look to register their first win on Saturday when they face the Perth Scorchers. That is a look at sports this evening. Wendy, it's back over to you. Thank you so much, Damien. We'll return after the break. That's news. Thanks for viewing and do enjoy the rest of your evening.